working now. This sucks. It should be on now, though. I'm seeing the microphone um, moving. It wasn't moving before. The little the little jack was a little bit loose in the microphone. Refresh. Refresh. It's working now. The sound is working. Yeah, just refresh. <clears throat> All right. Well, we're good to go now. Yeah, the mic, the little, you know how it plugs into the computer? It was a little bit jacked to the side, so it wasn't, you know, fully connected. So I had to mash it in there. And so now it's now it's good. Thanks for letting me know so quickly so we don't waste a whole bunch of time. So everybody, welcome to the Thursday chat here on the Depsterism channel. On Thursdays, we discuss a relationship-oriented topic, just that one issue, one theme for the night. On Tuesdays, we do uh, relationship advice questions. But tonight we're going to discuss a topic that, you know, it's like I've been looking at these advice letters that's coming in, right? And a lot of them, you know, we're the lady boss throwing up her exes and everybody's like, fired, get out of here, you know, all this stuff. And it's like, okay, why does this person who's in this relationship not recognize what's going on and know this shit is never gonna work never not in 500 years it don't matter how much effort and work and how much you try to make it work and all this stuff is never going to happen there are just some foundational conflicts that people have and i mean there's like dozens of them don't get me wrong i'm just i'm coming over i'm gonna be talking about what i think are the 12 most common that you should be able to know like right off the bat this shit is wasting my time you know and you should be like nexting this dude like with the seriousness of course if you're a guy these things might apply in reverse but as you know my audience is 85 percent women and so when i make shows it's primarily to that target market so it's not meant to slight the guys who have been loyal supporters here as well we got a few um, not meant to slight you at all, but, you know, you got to play to the largest audience. And for me, that's women. So what um, I wanted to do was talk about that first. Let me do a quick uh, promo. I want to remind everybody that we got video a day, February. It's like a renamed of February coming up in just a week or so, a little bit over a week. And during the month of February, I have promised everyone that I'm going to put up a video every day of the month. So that's 28 videos about to come your way. And what you want to do is if you are not already a subscriber to this channel, you want to make sure that you run over there, you subscribe, hit that bell symbol so you can get the the uh, instant notification for when the new video is uploaded so you don't miss anything. I mean, you know, you can always hit it later, but I'm going to be doing some surprise pop-up uh, live streams and, you know, I'm trying to book a couple of guests. I mean, I'm trying to make this month, you know, interesting <coughs> Excuse me, and exciting for you. And, you know, it's just a little bit different than what I usually do. And so we're going to be doing that every single day for the whole month. So be sure you subscribe at your earliest opportunity. All right. So let's see. Everybody, okay, the moderators put the little rules out there for the newbies and the people who like to get buck wild. So let's, uh, let's start. Now this... I'm calling it the 12 bombs because they just blow up. The relationship just blows up in your face. Some people are broadsided. They act like they don't know what was, you know, that was coming. I find that hard to believe, but whatever. So let's, let's, let's go. Let's talk about this. And I think it's important to note too. Thank you. I've been improving my, my, uh, my, I made that one with the flame myself. I did that. I'm getting better with my graphic design. Um, oh, and you're welcome, Ash. You're welcome. Um, I think it's important to note, you know, I'm talking about in the first, I don't know, I'd say four to five months because 
in the very beginning, like the first month or two, everybody's on their best behavior, right? That's when you're going to see, like, Mr. Perfect come marching out. He's going to be full of romance and love, and, you know, everything's going to be all grand and wonderful to get you caught up. But what you have to do, ladies, is stay balanced. And that's one of, be one of the topics that we talk about is how you need to pace your relationship because he's trying to put the bum rush on you. It doesn't mean that you go along with it. You put the brakes on that shit. You control the pace of the relationship as it develops. You do not let that get into his hands. But I'll be telling you how to do that. <coughs> and um, so this, this is going to pertain to, you know, after that honeymoon period is over. You're going to start noticing patterns, noticing themes, noticing trends, certain types of behavior keep uh, showing themselves over and over. And I want you to pay attention to them, and I want you to understand what those behaviors mean. And if he says certain things to you, he acts a certain way to, towards you, you will know, oh, no, this, this shit here is this never going to work. So instead of w wasting, like, years of your life with these women, I've been dating him four years. Oh, you know, we've been together 10 years. And it's like the bullshit been going on for, like, forever. But she just didn't see it or didn't want to accept. I don't know what to say about that. But uh, what I want you to do is think about, like, you know, when you first get in these situations and these little things start cropping up, don't ignore them. It's like when you see something that's, like, getting on your nerves, it's rubbing you the wrong way, it's making and you question what his motives are and stuff. Those are things to pay attention to. And you have to look at it. This is how, how I do it. I'm telling you my own thing. If this behavior never changed or if it got worse, how would I feel in a relationship with this man? And if my answer is, oh, hell no, I'm not dealing with this bullshit for no year, two years, five years, 10 years, or 20 years, I'm not going to do that. So if you're not going to do it for that long, you don't need to do it now. That's what I'm saying. That's how I'll be cutting them off real quick without any kind of like hesitation, no qualms, no nothing. It's like I, this is some shit I already know I don't want to deal with past tomorrow. And so you got to go today. And so that's just how it is. <clears throat> yeah, these women, they do. They ignore, they ignore signs. So let's let's get started when talk. I'm gonna try to give you some examples. I just made like a brief outline with my title, so I'll be trying to come up with stuff on the fly because I was so busy the last couple of days. I just really didn't have time to do, you know, to flesh this out too much. But I'll try to do it now. Okay, the number one problem is lack of chemistry, and people are like, "Well, what does that mean?" That means as an adult. You have to be not only attracted to a person, you know, like visually, you know, they have to, you know, look like something where you'd be like, well, damn, what's happening? What your name is? That kind of stuff. I mean, you want to, you know, get to know the dude, right? You like what you see. But it, it's deeper than that. It has to be a sexual uh, inter, in, interest in him as well. Now, this becomes a problem when you get to women who are like, you know, they're getting around hitting 40 or whatever, or they could be even younger, and they're, they they want to get married, okay? They want to have a family, and then here comes this guy. Now, he doesn't really, he's like a beta, you know, omega dude. He's not real manly-like. He's kind of soft and mushy and goofy or something. He's boring, but he wants to get married. He wants to have kids, and he makes good money. He's smart or whatever. I mean, he has some kind of redeeming social value. You know, maybe he comes from a good family or whatever. I mean, there's some something about him that makes you talk yourself into getting into this relationship with him, right? You you decide that all the exciting men that you used to have are not, not going to work, and so you go to the opposite end of the spectrum instead of somewhere in the middle. You go to the other end, and you get Mr. Boring, Mr. S S to, uh, what you call it, sofa spud, and you try to make that situation happen. You have no sexual attraction to this man whatsoever. The idea of fucking him makes you your, want to pull your skin off. You don't really want him touching you. He's like you endure sex with him. You endure his romantic adv advances. You barely want to kiss him. You be like, ugh. You know, it's not you don't want him to cuddle with you in the bed. It's like this wall is up. He's there, he's doing what you need him to do for that half of your interest, 
but the other half that makes you feel like a hot, exciting, sexy woman is left wanting. So many women make that choice. They feel like, well, this is good enough. It's not good enough. You're going to be fucking miserable, and so is he. Don't do that to yourself. If you, you know, you need to, you deserve to have it all, at least like 80% of it. I mean, you know, all men are going to get on your nerves. Please don't <laughs> get it twisted. You could be so excited to see this motherfucker that you start hyperventilating. But at the, some point, he's going to get on your fucking nerves, and you're going to want to stab him in the eye. That's just how it is. So, I mean, you could be married to him, just madly in love with him, have his kids, definitely not want to go nowhere or anything like that, but you still want to cut him. And that's just, that's how men are. It's like they just take a class in getting on their woman's nerves or something. But, you know, if you can hit that 80% mark, you're doing pretty good. If it's in the 90%, bam. But I'm telling you, well, they might not be ugly. Dude might not even be ugly. But he just, he just doesn't do it for you. That's all I can say. He might be a good-looking guy to someone else. But for you, whatever that turns you on, he doesn't do it. And I'm not saying he's ugly. I'm not saying he's misbuilt or anything. I mean, some of them really aren't. But they're just not. I mean, you know what I mean? They just don't do it for you. And and there's no real excuse for it. But a lot of women will talk themselves into that. And then they suffer, you know, from lack of sexual interest. And the man suffers. And it's just a big, hot mess. So eventually that's just going to blow up in your face as it should because you had no business doing that shit to yourself or him either and so you know don't try to talk yourself into anything it's either there or it's not either he does it for you or he doesn't you want a lot of other stuff too don't get me wrong but you don't sacrifice physical attraction as an adult woman in her prime sexual prime to get a man who you know meets those survival needs in the family thing and stuff you're tra- doing a vicious trade-off and now you're going to be miserable you're going to be very miserable with that okay so that's number one the lack of chemistry <coughs> all right let's do number two i wrote down not much if anything in common now this happens when you see people that are just so mismatched and it's like, how did this happen? Sometimes it is because, it's, I mean, it could be because they are so sexually attracted to each other. That's all they have in common, though. Once they get up from the bed, they look at each other. They don't have shit to say. They don't have any goals in common, no hobbies or interests in common. Like, you know, she might be very educated and very learned and love books and lectures and all this kind of stuff. And dude is like, you know, a TV bum. He likes to watch TV all the time and hasn't read a book since high school because he doesn't see any reason to when he could just get the stuff. He can listen, you know, to podcasts or whatever. So, I mean, you know, you guys have different ideas about child raising, which is going to come up later. Um... You know, you don't like the same kind of food stuff. is It's always a conflict of interest and, and ideas because you really have no common ground. And so when you see something like this, I mean, it might be exciting for six to eight weeks, you know, where you fuck each other's brains out or something. But at some point, you're going to realize, I can't take this motherfucker nowhere. He don't know nothing. He don't do nothing. I can't take him around my friends, definitely not my coworkers at the law firm. What the fuck am I doing? And it's going to just blow up. Now, you know, every woman goes through that. Men do it too. You know, everybody goes through this this phase where they get with somebody they know they shouldn't be with. But, you know, the thing about that is to recognize that you shouldn't be with them. Don't be stupid getting pregnant and all that old dumb shit. Don't be doing that. Because then, you know, you'd be left with a baby that got an ignorant fool for a daddy and he was in the wind because you guys never had any kind of real solid foundation in the first place oh my god yeah well i mean you could be open to meeting different but it has to be different within a realm of your parameters like like i'm saying okay like say you always only want to date dudes six two and and above well your little ass is five seven okay so you could date dudes five ten they don't have to be six, two, or three. So that's what I'm saying. But he meets every other, other things. The only thing is he's a little bit shorter than what you always focused on. That is a parameter under which you could work, and that would be different. Okay, maybe he don't have a master's degree. Maybe he just has a bachelor's. But he's very successful in whatever it is he's doing. It's not like he's a bum, 
You know what I mean? But you always want to have like these doctors and lawyers and all this kind of stuff. And the relationships never worked out because they never really had time for you. They were too focused on being, you know, Mr. Educated and, and Mr. Mr. Man About Town. So you made a more real, you want somebody who's intelligent, who reads books, you can have fun with and talk to and have great conversations with. He's not a dummy, but does he have to be a JD? Does he have to be a PhD to love you? You see what I mean? So there's there's different things that can be um, that can be adjusted. Oh, yeah, definitely common values. That's the main thing, you know. But these people, I'm telling you, they don't really have anything in common, nothing except fucking. That's it. They like each other because of that, but that's not enough to have a good relationship with. It's going to be a lot of conflict and unnecessary stress and strife. I, you know, that's just wasting time. I mean, it's not, not blow up right away, but it's going to blow up sooner or later. Some people just like to go along for the ride, and that's fine. He was boring, not laid back. <laughs> well, you know, I'm really sad to say most men are boring. They really don't understand that they're boring because they're like other guys that they know and they're all boring together. And so to them, it's not unusual, you know. But if you're a woman that likes, you know, to get out and do stuff and be busy and learn and do all the stuff, and then you have somebody, all he wants to do is sit around and watch TV, watch sports and, you know, Fox News or something. I'm like, later for you. Can't do it. All right, let's move on to number three. I call this one... Mr. Unstable SpongeBob. Why is he SpongeBob? Or he could be Sponge Malik, Sponge Jerome, Sponge whatever. Larry, I mean, whatever. I just, you know, SpongeBob because that's the name. But this is the dude that sponges off of everybody. He's just like, the dude don't have shit. He don't want to have shit. He ain't about shit. He just lives off of other people. He might even have his own place. He just couch surfs. You know, all over, just stand with one miscellaneous person for it after another. A few days here, a few weeks there, you know, whatever. He house sits for somebody who's in Europe for three months. I mean, he's just like a vagabond. And this is the dude that's always putting a touch to somebody for $10, $10, $20, 10 A girl at my job was telling me about a guy who, um, at her job, who was going around and borrow. He had borrowed like 10 or $20 from like dozens of people. And he never paid them back. And nobody knew until somehow they started talking about it. And then everybody found out that they had been fleeced for $20 by a dude. I mean, dude was a SpongeBob. Just going around like, you know, getting money from people, cigarettes from people, whatever it was. He just wanted to live off of some other, some other people's stuff. These are the dudes who always want to bum a ride, right? They want to bum a ride. They want you to drive them somewhere. But they don't never want to come out of pocket for some gas. You know, I used to have this thing on my car. I said, my car don't run on friendship. Give me some money for you put in the gas tank. And that's when gas was cheap. But, you know, people want to be acting all indignant. I'm like, well, then get the fuck out and catch the, catch the bus. Take a cab. I don't care what you do, but if you want me to ride, yeah, I'm already chauffeuring you. So, I, you know, I'm not going to use my gas to chauffeur you. You want me to drive you there so you pay for the gas. That's one thing. Um, this is the guy who is uh, he's always flaky. Um, sometimes, like you say, you're going to go on a date, right? He'll be the straight one to tell you, well, I don't have no money. So then, you know, like if you want to go out, right, and you want him to, you know, you want him to be with you, you already know you have to pay. And most likely, you're going to have to drive and pick him up, too, and then drive and drop him off after or take him to your house or whatever you guys going to do. I mean, these dudes are just a piece of work. They're just, just useless. They don't do shit. They don't do shit, but so many women have these kind of SpongeBob motherfuckers for their boyfriends and husbands. It's just terrible. He always needs some help. He always needs some support. He always needs some encouragement. You always need to boost him up, lift him up, support him. You know, just be, you know, where you, you need to submit to me. All this kind of stuff. And he don't have shit. He ain't about shit. And I always want to hold some money. You know, can I, uh, babe, uh, you know, uh, I'm coming up on some money. Uh, you know, can I hold $50? No. <laughs> you can't hold my money. You can hold $50 of somebody else's money, but not this one. You know, that kind of stuff. I mean, I, this might not be the best example, but I think you guys understand 
what I'm talking about. You know, we all got the people that we know. Sometimes it's a relative who is a SpongeBob. He go around, yeah, cuz, uh, you know, let me, let me hit, let me, let me hit you up for ten dollars. Let me borrow ten dollars. Yeah, I need five dollars. I, you know, I, I'm, I'm a little short. Can I, can I get that twenty, man? Can I get that twenty? Oh my God. So, uh, y'all need to recognize if you got somebody like that in your world trying to just always come up on your dime. And a lot of women don't, you know, they don't mind. They feel like, oh, you know, we're in a relationship. You know, I should help him. That's my man. I will sp- we're partners. We're this and that. So they end up giving him money and all this little kind of stuff. I'm like, nah, nah, Sponge, you, you can't, you know, that ain't happening. All right, so let's you get the idea, right? So you recognize any of them spongy kind of traits in a dude, then you need to get rid of his ass. Okay, number four. This is the guy who comes along that has unresolved relationship issues from his past. Now, this could be a parental relationship, but it's usually about some bitch. Okay, so he want to talk about the bitch. He want to be explaining about the bitch. He want to be texting the bitch, calling the bitch, you know, just having all this conversation about what she did to him and how trifling she is and she's so raggedy. She ain't shit. She this, she that, she that. Okay, and I told you guys before, when a man is talking about a woman to you, He's talking to you about some other broad. He's thinking about that other broad. So you in a situation with a man who's got his heart and his mind and shit wrapped up in some other broad. There's nothing for you there. Nothing. Nothing. You get a lot of, well, not you, but I mean, you know, a lot of y'all get caught up in that. Well, you know, she didn't treat him right. I'm going to show him what a good woman is. You know, I'm going to be there for him. I'm going to, and that's what they're looking for. They're looking for that sympathy ploy where you're going to come rushing in with your cape flying and, you know, t- holding your supergirl pose and thinking that you're going to save him and stuff. That's what they want. And this motherfucker, please. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just saying. It's like these are to me, like I said, these seem like just very obvious things that are tell you that this is not anything that you need to be getting involved in. This is an idiot. Okay, but the women will get themselves, you know, all caught up in it. And, you know, when you guys, when you have a man who is still, like, embroiled in conflict, like, you know, maybe they're going through a divorce or they already divorced, there's still animosity on it. You know, she left me, she cheated, he cheated. I mean, there's some emotions flying around between these two people. It's not resolved yet. What you have is a man who is emotionally unavailable. So you like, you know, I love him. But I love him, though. Why? You need to love yourself because he don't love you. He loves that other bitch, the one he keep talking about and texting and fighting with. That's who's got his attention. That's who got his heart. Because, you know, the opposite of love is not hate. It's indifference. And when you got somebody that still got all them emotions stirred up about somebody else in a relationship that's supposed to be over, (coughs) He's not, he, that, that's still, he's still involved there. His heart's still involved there. It's when your heart's not involved and somebody talk about your ex, all you do is roll your eyes and say, okay, well, yeah, anyway, and then you move on to the next topic because you don't want to even discuss it. You're not in that space anymore. But these guys that are like this, you know, a lot of women are like, well, I'm going to show him. I'm going to let him know he should pr- he should pick me. You know, I'm better for him. I won't treat him like that. And you get all special about it instead of dumping his ass and letting him go on back over there with her and work that out or die trying either way, you know. Honey, yes, you're right, dust. It's just too dusty. See, when I start talking about dustiness, notice how I start coughing? It's like the dust starts flying through the air because I'm talking about these dusty motherfuckers. Oh, my God. All right, so that's number four. Now let's talk about number five. And I don't know, you know, most relationship experts don't and talk don't talk about this kind of stuff. But to me, this is a big, a huge red flag. Huge, 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 huge. And I put it, I call it boundary violations. Now that's a big umbrella. That's a big umbrella. But um, let me just kind of walk you through some of the stuff that I've heard that has women's violation boundaries have been violated. Okay, one woman was talking about, well, you know, I told my boyfriend I did not want to do 
any but things. And you know what I'm talking about. I'm trying to watch my Google language. He, she didn't want to do no, no but things. So he did it anyway. When she, they, she had, he had consent for, you know, regular action. But he just took it upon himself to do that, you know, catch her by surprise. Do it anyway, even though she said no. And they, you know, she didn't, you know, and I'm like, you know, technically what he did was rape. You know, that was, uh, that's what that is. That's a sexual assault. And she's like, well, you know, but, you know, we are a couple, this and that. I said, yeah, but you said no. You said no, and he did it anyway. And then when you told him to stop, he didn't stop. So I, you know, he would have had to die. That's just from my perspective. But that's just one thing. Others, like you know, dudes take money out of girl, the women's purses. They take their cars. Like, see, she, he says, I'm going to go to the store. I'll be right back. And then he's gone in her car for six to seven hours. She don't even know where she, where he is or where her car is. Um, you know, they take your credit card. They sneak money out your ATM, you know, your ATM because you stupid and gave them your PIN number. See, these are things that have all come up in the advice column over the last six or seven months. Um, you know, these are things that women have written about. Oh, Tracy, thank you. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. This thing is just lingering. I was, this is kicking my ass. Um, you know, so you might even say you set some boundaries. You know, I don't want to have phone calls, uh, you know, late because I have to get up so early for work. So, you know, if it's after 9, you know, I'm probably going to be starting to wind down and head to bed because I have to get up at 5 or, you know, whatever. Okay, he keep calling at 10, waking you up. Now, even though you have the power to turn your phone off, you know, some women don't do that because they know it might be an emergency. They have aging parents. Somebody's in a hospital. Friends about to have a baby. I mean, you know, maybe she's on call for the tech support. Or something. There could be a reason why your phone, you can't turn your phone off. It has to stay on. And then when it rings, you have to answer it because of these possible situations that will need your response. But... That doesn't mean this nigga should be calling you when you've done already told him not to call you after 9 o'clock because you have to get up early, but he keeps doing it anyway. He's doing what he wants to do, and it's putting you in a very, you know, a bad situation. Because, like I said, you're in a situation where you have to answer the phone. So you wake up, and then you see it's him wanting to chit-chat about some bullshit. You know? It's just unbelievable. Um, also, they'll do stuff like, you know, take your stuff. Um, and I had this this guy, you know, I was seeing this dude, and I had some stuff, you know, like a T-shirt, a chip hair, underwear, or something, you know, some, some makeup, toothbrush, you know, just basic shit at his house. And then his sister comes over, and he lets her use my stuff and take my T-shirt and take my drawers. I was like, what? Are you? And I'm thinking, are you sure it was your sister? You know what I mean? I didn't believe that shit, but I'm just telling you what he said. And uh, I'm like, hmm. So that was the end of that. See, that's it's a violent. That's my shit. You're not supposed to let some other broad use my shit. What is this? Stuff like that. People who like, even when you're out to eat, right? You eating, and they just reach onto your plate and take some of your food. I hate that shit. Get your grubby mitts off of my. This is my plate. You have a plate there. If you want to try something, you're supposed to ask me. You don't just assume that it's okay. All kind of stuff like that. People do things like that. <laughs> Allergic to Dusty's girl. Yes. Chew. Big old, big old sneeze. Um, what they also do, um, this girl just did a Lynn Tuesday. We just talked about this. She was talking about a guy that she was, she had went on this first date with and how he kept touching her. You know, don't touch me. I didn't give you permission to touch me. You know, dudes, they want to touch your waist. They want to touch your arm, you know, rubbing your hair and all this stuff. It's like, motherfucker, I don't know you. And it's like, don't do that. Don't do that. Or, you know, you're dancing with them, right? And they want to dance all on you and try to hump you on the dance floor and all this kind of stuff. See, boundary violations right and left. And it's like, you know, women a lot of times don't speak up. You guys are afraid to say something or whatever. I don't know. You know, they go through your phone. They go through your 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 um cabinets your file cabinets and stuff your drawers and whatnot these are all violations boundary violations it's though they don't have any business doing anything like that and if you have somebody who would do something like that and this goes for you women who think that shit is cute too then you have somebody who has some issues with trust 
or they just nosy as fuck. But either way, that's going to be an uphill battle for you to deal with because if they're that insecure and jealous and, and they want to be nosy and dealing all in, you know, looking all in your stuff without permission, see, to me, that'll get you tossed out on your ass. I don't like people in my house in the first place, but if I trust you enough to let you in there and then you want to start going through my shit, you got to go. You got to go. Yeah, see, but I'm just, I'm throwing out different things, you know, to kind of get you guys to thinking about this. A lot of women don't see these things as violations. You know, their tolerance level for bullshit is obviously much higher than mine. But, you know, you guys don't, I think a lot of young ones that don't have a lot of experience with dating, they don't understand the ramifications of this kind of behavior. He's testing you. He's seeing how much you're going to let him get away with. And trust me, if he gets away with that kind of stuff, it's just going to escalate. Next thing, he's going to be all up in your purse, taking all your money. You know, I mean, just... All kinds of stuff. You cannot let these guys do that. You have to have very firm boundaries and not, and the instant they cross them, you get rid of them. You know, mm -mm. there's just some narcissistic bullshit. Just feel like they can do whatever they want to. All right, this is a big one. Number six. I called it strained communication, but this is, a again, a very broad umbrella. How many people do you know dating that they talk about, oh, you know, all we do is fight all the time. We fight all the time. And I'm like, who has a relationship where you fight all the time? Why is that even a considered relationship? That's some nonsense. You shouldn't be doing that. And, you know, it's like you have the, it's like, it's hard to talk to them. Everything you say, they take it wrong. They had, you said this phrase called, so, you know, somebody got a, quote, bad understanding. That's what it is. Everything you say, they've twisted into something else. And then so you find yourself re-explaining and, you know, providing examples and trying to clarify and apologizing a lot. Oh, well, no, you know, I'm sorry. That's not what I meant. Oh, you know, but no, you're just dumb. And it's like, I can't talk to you. You're retarded. I don't want anything to do with you. I cannot waste my breath. I only have so many breaths to live in this lifetime. I'm not using them on you. You're a dummy. You got to go. You know, and then another thing they like to do, too, is, okay, people will have disagreements as couples. That's just, you know, that happens. But if you notice, these kinds of folks, they have, it's an argument about everything. Everything. Oh, look, the sky is blue. Well, no, it's you know, it's not really blue. It's kind of more, you know, cerulean with some gray in it, and you know, it's tinges of fuchsia. You know, it, 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 it's not blue. I don't know what you're looking at. Everything you think, everything's just like in a book. Meh, meh, meh. And then off and running he goes, you know, with this on this tangent. Yeah, I just can't do it. I just don't feel like it. You know. You hate folks like that, Lady Bus girl. That should wear you out. And it's just always about nothing. It's always about nothing. Yeah. I can't do it. I can't do it. And um, and I made a note here. Another component to that fighting is, okay, sometimes, you, you know, they have an argument, right? You're supposed to resolve it. It's supposed to, like, solve a problem. You, at the end of the discussion, if it gets heated, you two have arrived at some some kind of common ground where you're going to move forward, okay? Compromises may have been made. One person maybe was unclear and got straight. I mean, all kind of things could happen in this conversation. But at the end of it, the, whatever the issue was should be resolved. Not with these fools. You're going to go around and around and around in a big circle and it's never going to get resolved. One of the big things they love to do is bring up some shit that happened like 27 years ago or... They, instead of did addressing the issue, like you bring an issue to them, you know, that you want to see corrected, instead of addressing that, this they, oh, well, what about what you did? Well, you know, you do the same thing. Well, you know, I don't like it when you blah, blah, blah. Okay, so now the conversation is not like trying to resolve anything. Instead, it's going to, he's trying to make you be on the defensive so that he can be right about the fucked up shit that he did that you was getting on him about. See, that's the, there's no, you can't communicate with people like that. You're going to be constantly frustrated, constantly feeling like, what the fuck is the point of all of this? You know, it's just, it's, just, it's just like a waste of your human energy that you should be doing something positive and creative with. You know, helping somebody in the world, building something, developing something, making something beautiful. Instead, you sitting up there wasting it, going around and around in circles with a dusty. 
Oh, my God. It's that these dudes are just a trip. And then, um, okay. Well, I, I'm sorry. I skipped something. Oh, yeah. Name calling. Some of them are Nate. They will call you name to, to try to win. And then my final point, my final bullet, he will never give you direct answers and is always evasive and sometimes even irritated when you ask him direct questions because all you try to do is get to know him. Well, honey, what do you think about such and such? A? Well, did you like such and such? A? Well, it was okay, I guess. Okay, well, what does that mean? Did you like it or not? Why are you on my case? Okay, so you ask, you trying to get to know what his tastes are, right? He don't want you in his head. He don't want you to have no definitive information about him. His shut down all communication is just a nightmare. I, them kind of men will just, they will make you feel like you crazy. Trying to just have a fucking conversation with them. It's like pulling teeth. It's like, it's just unbelievable. I can't do it. I've seen a lot of women in relationship with men like that, and I just be looking at them. Because he was he was shut down and I would get my shit and walk the fuck out. And just never be seen again. I'd be like Jack and the Beanstalk. <laughs> Let me climb up out of here. I don't know if it's drama. I don't know what, what that thing is, but it's like they want, they just want to be walled off, you know. And so they do, they will push you back with words. And they will push you back with behaviors. And now this one woman, I know her husband, like when they would be trying to have a conversation and with him about something he did to got on her nerves, he would just get up and walk out the door. They were married now, but he would just get up and walk out the door and drive off in his car. Okay, how effective is that to shut down communication? They divorced now. She said she finally woke up. But I'm like, you know, these are the kind of things that you ladies need to watch out for. These are super red flags of incompatibility and bad choices in a partner. You getting communicating with your man, even if there's arguments here and there, is important that you guys be able to do that and resolve your conflicts. That is the sign of a good couple matching. When you can resolve conflicts, it's not it's unrealistic to think that you'll never have a conflict. You're going to have one. But you know, it's how you come to the conclusion what you do about it, rather, that this makes all the difference. I'm telling you, I don't like that. I don't them people, man, that's that pulling teeth shit. I'm exhausted just talking about this. Now, if that was um Number six. Now, here's number seven. In this grouping are lies, disrespect, and broken promises. Because broken promises are both disrespectful and they lied to you because they said it was going to do something and then they didn't do it. So I just kind of grouped them all together, right? Now, I think this is important because a lot of women, you know, like to do the flake on them, right? And they just, bro they just blow it off. My thing is this. If you have some motherfucker that you can't trust to come through, and with the stuff he says he's going to do, please explain to me how you think that you can expect to be have fidelity and commitment with a man like that. He has no integrity, he has no sense of honor at all. He just says anything and then does what the fuck he pleases and just leave people hanging. I know this girl, she had this dude, <coughs> then she called herself dating, right? And then she had to move because something was going on in her building. Everybody had to move. And they had to do some, like, extensive repairs and all the stuff with fumes and all the stuff. So everybody moved. And so she needed him, you know, to come and help her move. This, oh, yeah, I'll be there. You know, I'll be there at 10 o'clock. Luckily, she had a couple of other people, mostly her female friends that had come over to help. And uh, this nigga never did show up. And she, every time she talked to him, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm on my way. I'm on my way. Just lying. Just disrespectful of her. And I thought she was crazy. She kept seeing him. I would have fired his ass on the spot. It's like, don't even bother coming. Don't ever come. Just forget that you know me. And just keep wherever you are, stay there. Or go somewhere else, but don't come here. You know, that, that, that's just the ultimate disrespect. What if she didn't have any help and she was really dependent on him? You know what I mean? Mm-mm. Nope. A lot of these guys, you know, these are the guys that women write in about, well, you know, when we're together, you know, he looks at other women. Or when we're together, he grabs my boobs in front of everybody. It grabs my butt in front of everybody, and it just is embarrassing. It makes me feel cheap and tawdry. And I tell him to stop, but he keeps doing it anyway. See, that kind of stuff. Just disrespectful. Just a little asshole. Or, um... He claims that he wants a serious relationship with you, right? 
oh yeah you know that's what i want too i you know i've been looking for somebody like you blah 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 then you come to find out the motherfucker's living with some broad or he got some broad pregnant or he's engaged or he's married you know but he lied potentially to manipulate and deceive you into giving him what he wants that is horrible because then they try to present you this alternate reality, you know, because it's none of it's real. What he's spinning for you is a fantasy world. And then when you find out what he did, why do so many of you keep seeing him? This is a man now who just lied to you, manipulated you, fucked with your head and did all kind of other stuff. And you now know that that's what he did and he ain't shit. And you still see him. You know what you have just done? You have just given him a license to dog your ass into the ground, underground, miles into the ground. Because you didn't stand up for yourself. You have no boundaries. You don't even have self-respect. You let somebody treat you like that. It's one thing when you didn't know. But once you find out and you know that's not the kind of situation you want to be in, why would you continue to involve yourself with this clown? He has no morals. He's a fucker. Look how he's treating the other woman and then how he's treating you too. And he don't have no qualms about it. Just like, so I'm getting what I need, I need out the deal. You know, I'm just telling you, you guys, you really need to do something about this. You know, pay attention to how you feel when you're with these dudes. I think that's a good barometer. If you tune into how you feel, You'll see that you don't feel very good. You feel anxious. You know, some women, like, they have heart, their heart races. They can't sleep. You know, they gr start grinding their teeth. Their skin breaks out. You know, they start gaining weight or losing a lot of weight. I mean, you know, that's a sign your stomach is hurt. Those are signs of stress. And, um, you know, you trying to go through all of this just to keep this man around? Girl, you better than me. You're better than me. Now, under 7A, because I was going to say, oh, shoot, I should have made 13 points. But, no, this is under lies and disrespect and broken promises are issues that come up with the man's kids, with the man's parents or other family members, his friends, or his baby mama, and even his own children. If he lets them disrespect you, talk to you crazy, and he don't go knee-deep in their ass to shut them down, then that's his tacit approval of their behavior towards you because he's not doing nothing to stop it he's not intervening on your behalf whatsoever you need to recognize what time it is and get rid of that motherfucker because his loyalty is not with you it's not and any man who's worth his salt you know if his kids start getting off you know jumping froggy he's gonna shut that shit down you know, he's not going to let them talk to you crazy. I mean, he can't stop them from doing it, but, I mean, he's going to, you know, correct their behavior. But um, when they don't say nothing or, like, you know, what do you expect me to do? Well, you know, they're just kids. So that's indicating that you're just supposed to accept, the, accept that kind of fuckery. No. Nah. So that's, um, that's 7A under the lies and disrespect thing. All right, now let's move on to number 8. We're going 12 points. I have 12 points of dustiness. <laughs> 12 points that you know if this stuff is going on in your relationship, your shit sooner or later, most likely sooner, is going to blow up in your face like a bomb. And then you're going to be sitting over there looking crazy like, oh, no, you know, why didn't I understand what was happening? All right, let's go on. Let's do point number eight. Now, if your dude has low self-esteem and trust issues with women, it's a wrap. All you're doing is signing on to be fucking tortured. That's what you're doing. And these dudes, you know, a lot of you think, you know, because here they come, right? They try to, they run this game. Well, you know, uh, women always cheat on me. You know, women just cheated on all the men that I know. And they left them and took their kids and took their money and this and that and blah, blah, blah. Okay, so they pull out the violins. They just, you know, playing the sad song. Now, this is when it gets interesting because, you know, a lot of y'all bite. You bite. And you start, you know, getting your chest all puffed out. Oh, my God, I'll save you. 
from a broken heart. You know, and then the music plays and you strike your Supergirl pose again. Cape flying in the wind and shit. Because you going to save a motherfucker. You cannot save a man who has low self-esteem, ladies. He needs a shriek for that shit. And unless you are one, I mean, you know, that's your career, your your field of study, then you're not qualified to deal with some crazy, depressed, low self-esteem having fuck tar. Just not, that's out your skill set. Okay, but you gonna sit there and try to break yourself down trying to help this man be a, be a better man and trust women again. So what you're going to be doing, you got set up by all this dragon drama. He dumped at your feet. So now you start jumping through hoops to try to prove that you're not going to be like those other women and that he can trust you and that you would never cheat on him because you're a wonderful woman. Remember the little girl who was the Virgo with the Scorpio a week or two ago? Same shit. That kind of mentality is what she had that I'm talking about here. That's what I'm saying. Every one of these that I brought up, we had recent examples of it in the advice column. You know, this you guys should be able to reflect back and say, oh, yeah, I remember, you know, this letter came in. It was like this, like that. Because these are like all very recent examples of women writing in here with these types of, of behaviors. Um, you know, the, oh, the MGTOW dupes, right? Oh, oops. They are the famous ones for talking about, you know, all women are gold diggers and, and you know, they, they're they all, you know, cheaters and liars and, and all they want is, you know, your money. And, you know, if you don't have money, they don't want you. It's like, who you think wants some broke motherfucker? Let's just get real, okay? You don't have shit. Why should somebody want to look at you? Please, you're not that cute. I mean, if you're going to be broke, you need to be fly as fuck. And then some woman might want to be bothered with you. But you just an average looking dude before and below average. You need to have some fucking money to kind of level the playing field. And then you might get some attention. But you just broke and ugly, it's a wrap for you. You ain't going to never get no pussy unless you pay for it. That's just how that's going to go. So, um, you know, this guy cries about all these women he was cheated on. Women always lie. Women are no good. Women hate men. You know, feminism. You know, all this stuff. Okay, so he cried about that. And then if it's any topic that has to do with women, you will notice he gets extremely angry. Okay, it's like a fuse gets lit. He starts going off on a tangent talking about you all, you women, this, blah, blah, blah. So once you hear something like that, you hear something like somebody talking about all you women and it's with a negative thing like that you need to leave him alone because he's crazy he's crazy there's a problem there some of these dudes um even like they had them videos on like that crazy world star site where men be beating on women and you know all the stuff be going on women be in fights and trucks trying to get away and they love that shit. Oh, they just go crazy. They love, they can't get enough of violence towards women. It just makes them excited. They love that shit. Just love it. It's like he may not do it himself, but he can live vicariously by watching other men do it, which is why men don't intervene when they see something going on, like what happened in that nightclub in Atlanta last weekend. Which I'm not, you know, I didn't see the video people were telling me about. I don't want to see it. But, um, yeah, they all over YouTube, just about a million, seem like. Just just like roaches just coming out the dark, slithering up the wall. Just little, just disgusting creepies. I don't know. But what these dudes do, you know, so, so they first they get you in with the pity, right? And then they start attacking you because they can't let you think that you're better than he is or you are better than those other women. So they're going to start pointing out your flaws. They're going to start putting you down, belittling you, making you feel small and insignificant and like you're useless and ugly and no man will ever man will want you. They are doing that because they are afraid of losing you. They want to keep you in a weakened position because then that makes them feel like they have more control and then he doesn't have to be so jealous and so insecure and, you know, his confidence so shaken and why would she want me, you know, why is she with me, you know, I don't think I'm good enough. That's what he's really thinking, but he's not going to communicate that. So what he does is he puts you down to try to make you feel less and smaller than what he feels about himself. And I'm like, shit. You know, they're going to pick at your hair. They're going to pick at your weight. Sometimes they even make stuff like you're eating, right? You know, you're eating. Oh, you're going to eat that. 
and they say it with this tone so you know it's like he's just you know this disapproving tone it's like implying that if you eat that you're going to blow up to the size of an elephant or something and so most women feel kind of intimidated because they know what he's saying but you know in reality you say yep and if you keep talking shit instead of eating when i finish mine i'm gonna eat yours too dummy you know just fire back at him i don't you talking to me crazy like that but um you know you guys get caught up because he tells you that you know he thinks you're different that he thinks he can trust you that you're going to be the magic medication that's going to heal all his wounds from other women before you and just understand your ass ain't magical and that black girl magic shit is bullshit. You don't have no magic, and you ain't going to fix no broke man. That's not going to happen. He's broken. Yeah, and I call them mouth breathers. They be bro- <laughs> Hi. Oh. <laughs> oh, no, 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 son. Can't do it. Can't do it. And they just too fucked up for me. I can't. Mm-mm. All right, let me go on to number nine. Number nine. I could, okay, I was in a mood. Okay, Houdini and David Copperfield don't have shit on this magical disappearing act motherfucker. Okay, this boy can disappear in a puff of smoke, and nobody knows where this nigga is. Where is he? Where he be at? You call him, you text him, he just... MIA. You don't know where he is. He never told you where he was going. And then, you know, he just like drops off the map. You might have been having some really good time with him, you know, really good. And then suddenly he just disappears and be gone for a couple of days, a week, sometimes longer than that. Just no explanation. Just like go like ghosted. He just ghosted you. But then he magically, like, you know, they do in the magic box where they open it and it, the person disappears. And then he waves the wand, and then magically the person's back in the box. That's how he does. So then you, you know, he waves, and then he's back in the box, and you're like, oh, well, where did you go? And all astonished because it was like a magic trick. He disappeared before your very eyes, and then he was there again, right? And so y'all take him back. Fraggle Rock, oh, no. Somebody in the way back machine. You know, but it's like. I don't know, you don't, and then it's like they have like this secret undercover life, you know. You don't really know where he lives. Oh, you know, I stay over there on on West 59th. Okay, and some of these girls be right there, and you're talking about, well, you know, I don't really know his real name. Uh, They know his street name, you know, J-Rod, you know, Pooh Bear, you know, Mickey. That ain't his real name, Mickey Mouse, you know, Mickey for sure for Mickey Mouse because he got big ears or something. But it's like, that's his street name. That's not his real name. And here you are laying up with the motherfucker and pregnant by him. And, you know, you're going to write on the birth certificate, get Mickey and J-Dog? No. <laughs> you shouldn't do that. This is just terrible. Um, Yeah, and then somewhat like the girl talked about yesterday where she had met the guy's friends and family. You know, there's two, like I said, there's two sides to that. There's a side like me, which you ain't meeting them, and it don't mean I'm doing nothing with nobody else. You're just not going to meet them. And then there's the other part where the people have something to hide, which might be a family, a wife, a girlfriend, um, a trans lover. I mean, who knows what they be hiding, you know what I mean? But that's why you can't meet anything, you know, anybody close to them because they don't want any of the truth accidentally being spoken to you because they trying to keep you in a certain box in their life and you can't get out you in this one envelope and that's as far out as you get so you have to decide you know is this the kind of relationship that you want if it's not then you just move on that's that's all it is yeah these dudes be be secretive like uh like an interpol agent (laughs) just like he's just like just he just is secretive or you know sometimes they say well you know i have you know you say oh do you have any children yeah i got you know two do you have pictures? Nah. You have no pictures of your kids? Nah. I barely see them. You know, they, they mama, this and that. You know, she won't let me see them. But see, again, that's because he doesn't want you in his life that deep. I'm like, mm, okay. 
But yeah, that disappearing act, that's the biggest one. They just disappear. And then you, you know, you guys take them back. And I'm like, why would you do that? Somebody who just so callously disappears, just drops off the map like he fell off a cliff or something. Just now he's there, now he's not. David Carpenfield magic. A street name called Dump. Yike. That's not good. <laughs> oh. All right. They'll straighten up until they get thirsty again. I don't know. These chicks don't be really straightening up from what I could see. Until until they get older and then they realize, you know, how dumb they were, but it's too late by then. Some of them got two or three kids by then. It's just really sad. I mean, like I said, it's fine. You know, you want to deal with you know i mean any woman who wants to deal with her, have her experience her full range of sexuality and do some stuff she knows she's not supposed to do with somebody she knows she's not supposed to do it with protect yourself strap rep strap that shit up and uh you know do make sure your birth control game is tight that's how you do that and to be smart you do not go having babies by miscellaneous stray magical disappearing fools you don't do that all right number 10 these are women who are starved for intimacy now i don't mean sex okay because you know as a woman we can get that anywhere anytime it may not be good but we can still get it if that's really all you want but i'm talking about like that emotional connection to a man where you could tell him anything, he could tell you anything. You guys understand each other on a deep level. You know, there's like out of bed affection and what they call them, public displays, PDAs, you know, hand holding, little kisses, you know, just random little hugs, you know, walks in the park where you hold in hands and whisper sweet nothings to each other, where you cuddle in bed and stuff. But this dude, instead of cuddling in bed, you know, you reach for him, you want to cuddle with him, right? He rolls over and says, you're too hot. You make him too hot. Or, you know, you try to hold his hand, he puts his hands in his pocket. You trying to give him a kiss, he's pushing you out the way because he's trying to see the TV. That's more important than, you know, taking 10 seconds to connect with his woman with a little kiss. A little hanky panky. And these dudes will tend to be so, I mean, the wall is up so fierce that sometimes, you know, like you might want to go on a date with him, you want to spend time with him and stuff like that. He's busy all the time. So you're always having, he don't want to plan nothing. Everything has to be last minute because he can't possibly plan anything because that would interfere with what fun that might come down the pike with his friends or his miscellaneous whatever road dogs. So he's not going to plan anything with you. But if he happens to have some time free when you call and nobody else is called, then he'll do it. That's the game they like to play. So they're not really trying to, you know, establish anything with you. You're just something to do. And a lot of women don't understand. So they end up in this, what they call a relationship, but it's more like a situationship where they're doing everything to try to keep the relationship going. They do most of the calling, all the calling. He just calls when he wants something, and you know what I'm talking about. Um, they set up all the dates. Usually have to pay for the dates. They invite him over. They're cooking for him. You know, they're doing all the stuff for this dude to try to keep him in contact with them and keep him around, and he's not doing shit. He's not doing anything. And it's like finally, you know, it's like after months of that little struggle love, you know, she finally gets a clue and wakes up and then she's done with him. But, I mean, look at all that money and time and energy you wasted on a man who was never, ever giving you in the kind of relationship you wanted. Not one day did he do it. It was you chasing him the whole time, trying to get him to commit to you and to be your boyfriend and to spend time with you. And it's like you're just begging him. To, to, to spend time with you and, and to try to get connected to him. And he's just putting up walls right and left. He's like, like kung fu. Whoa, 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 whoa. He's not trying to be with you like that. You know? He's not trying to do it. Uh, okay. Oh, I see what I wrote. Got my, um, my writing so bad. So basically what you end up with, you know, this guy puts you in a position where you're feeling needy. 
and insecure and unsure, you know, what's going on. And, and you're, you know, you, depression gets mixed up in there, anxiety and all the stuff, because you're trying to make something happen that's, you know, he's blocking it at every turn. And a lot of these women get confused about these kind of men because he may, some parts of the relationship may actually be really good. You know what I mean? But the parts that's bad leave you hurting. So you're in a lot of pain, emotional pain, and feeling really neglected and all of this stuff. So you, like I said, you got to tune into how you feel. How do you feel? And if you're not feeling good about the relationship, you know, you, you feel like, you know, lonely and you're crying and whatnot, then um, it's, kind of, it's kind of a problem. What's Lady Boston there saying? She is so crazy. She's timed out <laughs> for 120 seconds. <laughs> It'll do that if you type too many comments too fast. All right, so that's number 10. Start for intimacies. Intimacy. Hugs, kisses, romance, conversation. That's the kind of intimacy I was talking about. All right, let's move on to number 11. Now, these kind of guys... They just come in the door like gangbusters, okay? One of the ladies talked about this in her letter the other day, how the dude was just like calling her, and he was just all over her. And I went out with a dude one time was like that. We were just supposed to meet for drinks, right? And, you know, so he wanted to extend it to dinner. Okay, that's fine. I was a little hungry. So we ate a little light dinner. And then he, you know, I said, well, I, you know, I need to go have some things I need to do was, you know, nice spending his time with you and this and that. So he's like, oh, you know, can I call you again? I'm like, yeah, you know, why not? He was okay. I didn't feel no, like, major sparks, but I didn't feel disgust either. So for me, that's good. So I go to the gas station, and I make it to my house. Now, my house was about two miles away from where we met. So, you know, it didn't take me no time to, to go. But he had to drive all the way to San Jose, which is, like, 60 miles away. So he calls me. Now, I had just spent what was supposed to be a quick drink, right, 30 minutes. I had just spent like two hours with this guy because we extended it to dinner. Okay, I had shit to do that night, and that's all. I didn't want to spend any more time dealing with this dude. He was nice and all, but you know what I mean? I'd already given you like four times as much time as I had originally planned to. I, I need to be busy now. So he calls me, and I pick up the phone, and it's him. I'm like, I'm thinking, okay, didn't I just talk to you? And he's like, well, you know, you, I enjoyed it so much. I just want to keep talking to you and this and that. And he got mad because I told him I couldn't talk to him. And he, I had to hang up now. He got mad. But you know how my, I am with my boundaries? I had very firm boundaries. My boundary meant I was about to do this other thing here and you wasn't going to stop me. So, you know, he was I highly insulted and thought I didn't like him and all this stuff. It's like, no, that's not it. It's like. You know, you had a chance, but now you're fucking it up because now you should have been gracious and just said, you know, I'm sorry. I, you know, I just really, I guess I got a little over eager. How about I call you tomorrow? Something like that. He could have saved himself, but instead he wanted to argue with me about why I should not do what I need to do to talk to him, which is what he wanted me to do. And so then he became every kind of motherfucker and I hung up the phone. And then that was that. So, you know, I'm like, these dudes just be doing too much. But, you know, they come on real slow. A lot of women like that, right, because they like this. They want that feeling of, you know, that breathless whirlwind of romance. You know, that, like, they love that shit. It's like a Harlequin romance. And they, like, you know, they just like, oh, my God, you know, he calls me all the time. He just really wants me. He sends me flowers. He's, you know, he sends me sweet texts. You know, good morning, angel, good eat with hearts. You know, they like all that stuff. When a man starts doing that, you need to be very careful, okay? Because what he's trying to do is get you involved with him emotionally and physically, and you, you know what I'm talking about, before you really find out that he's such a b fucking bullshit artist. That's what he's trying to do. So they try to get you wrapped up and caught up before they let the pull off that, you know, sheepskin and that wolf jumps out. So then as most women, you know, by the time that happens, they're like, oh, but I love him, though. That's what he's trying to do, trying to get you all caught up. And um, a lot of people call this, um, the new term is, I call it putting a mash on you, but people call it love bombing, which is, I don't know who thought that term up, but I don't like that term, and I'll tell you why. There's nothing about what he does that indicates is loving. It's not love at all. So to call it love bombing is wrong. It's not love. It's control. It's manipulation. It's deceit. And it's some kind of narcissistic nonsense. Okay, but it's not love. 
So, I mean, by saying love bombing, it makes it, it kind of pretties up the behavior, you know what I mean? It makes it more palatable to, to a lot of women. But that's why I don't like, you've never heard me use that term. Never. I don't, I'm, I don't like that. I don't, I don't do that. It's, it's, he's fucking over you. That's what he's doing. And, um, you know, he's just putting a mash on you. That's all it is. He's trying to you know, press you into a situation so that you don't feel that you feel like you don't really have any control. And, you know, you think all this flatter, flattery he's giving you and all these, you know, tokens of affection and all this stuff is, um, you know, it's meaningful. It means something serious is jumping off. But all he's really trying to do is present himself as Mr. Wonderful and Mr. Perfect so that you will develop, you know, attach yourself to him, in which case he will have open season on you. That's all it is. He'll be able to move in. He'll be able to, you know, get some money from you to help him start a business. All this stuff because you got all in your emotions and didn't use your brain to see what was really behind all these magic tricks dude was doing. Like the Wizard of Oz. Yeah, it's not love. That's what I'm saying. Um, it's that's why I don't I don't like that term. I mean, people sometimes come in the chat and they use it and they post it up there. But you know, like I said, I don't know where that phrase originated from. I think you know it means evidently the same thing. I when somebody's put the mash on you, it means like the same thing. But to me, that saying love mommy is an oxymoron, and those two words should not be used in the same sentence because it's nothing about it that's loving and bombs blow up and destroy shit so how is that you see what i mean that just doesn't even make any sense to me so i never would i don't use that that term now you know you're getting all this non-stop attention you know a lot of women are just attention whores they i mean i hate to use that phrase but that's what y'all are you thrive on other people's acknowledgement of you you just is incapable of doing that to yourself. So you need somebody around you, so you think. You need somebody around you to tell you that you're pretty and you're smart and you're sexy and you're all these things because you don't believe any of those things about yourself. They look for women like you because they know you're vulnerable and you will fall for this bullshit. So y'all better get your self-esteem intact because, you know, you just set yourself up to be a game to these men. They see you coming. They're like, they're the radar's like, and there you are, and there he goes after you. You're easy prey because you're so emotionally needy and insecure, and your self-esteem is shot. So you know you gotta get. They're gonna be looking at you as a victim because you just you know you respond when you respond to all that attention in a positive way. They know they got you. Yeah, they talking shit. And so, yeah, but what do they act? They don't do shit, you know, except cause a bunch of drama. I'm like, mm mm. Yeah, they they need that kind of validation, and it's very unfortunate when you see it, you know. And I mean, you know, it's normal to feel some excitement, you know, especially when you first get in a relationship. You know, it's exciting. You know, this person's new. I mean, the person might turn you on like immensely. You know, you just can't get enough of them. Can't keep your hands off each other. I mean, all this stuff is awful, wonderful, and fabulous. But that shit, shit better be balanced with some reality. Like he, all he's, if all he does is talk shit, but he doesn't actually do anything. I mean, how are you? You know, how are you arriving that this is a sensible situation for you to be in? I was like, I don't get it. I don't know. That don't be working for me. I would rather a man never tell me any kind of flattery stuff, but just just show me. Show me how you feel about me. Don't tell me with words. I want to see the shit. That would be more to me, you know. Yeah, and I don't think... Like I said, now you got somebody mentally ill. I forgot who, I mean, it rolled by already on the thing. But you got somebody mentally ill doing what you call in love, mommy. See, that's what I'm saying. That phrase makes no sense to me. That just is, uh, just doesn't make any sense. All right. Um, And then the final one, the final one is your dude is just a straight up, straight out of the DSM-5 narcissist. Now, there's a lot of narcissists. I would have found some studies. Let me see. It says here, chances are high that you will run into one who is on some level of the narc spectrum. The University of Buffalo condensed 31 years of research on narcissism involving almost a half a million participants 
interim report which concluded that even taking on broad differences of age and background, men are more likely to be narcissistic than women. And then this doctor is quoted as saying, narcissism is associated with various interpersonal dysfunctions, including an inability to maintain healthy long-term relationships, unethical behavior, and aggression. In other words, our narcissism could be a sign that something is deeply wrong, both in our relationship with ourselves and therefore our relationship with the world. Okay, now if scientific studies proven that most of the narcissists in the world are men and you're a woman and you're going out there trying to date a dude chances are you're going to run into a narcissist and what are the key things here interpersonal dysfunctions can't maintain a healthy long-term relationship unethical behavior that's what the lying and the cheating and you know tipping out on your wife and sliding off condoms and, you know, sneaking into people's bodies and positions and, and stuff that they didn't tell you to do. Sabotaging birth control. You know, twisting women's arms, taking their keys and stuff, locking them places so they can't leave. All these kinds of things, you know, assault and, you know, uh, these pack of, of rapes and all stuff. All of those are unethical behaviors. And who does those things? Men. Okay? Those are men. Child molesting, all that. Men. Okay. Um, and then the aggression, you know, the wanting to, you know, hurt women all the time, you know, and they're mad if you don't do what they want you to do and they want to kill you because you're like, you're ruining their narcissistic belief in themselves as being like this wonderful, perfect person it, by leaving them and abandoning them, throwing them away. See, that goes against their fantasy that they try to have in their head about being, you know, Mr. Perfect. Obviously, they can't be Mr. Perfect because the woman that they had picked as Mr. Perfect doesn't want them. You see what I'm saying? So it, it creates a problem. So you start seeing these behaviors like, you know, you got a dude who's real jealous. Um, and you think that shit is cute? You need to get the fuck away from him. Women who are these jealous ass men, and they say, you know, they're dead. Okay, because the dudes would rather sit down the rest of their life in prison than have you be free to be with some other man. That's how jealous and insecure and possessive these dudes are. Their sense of narcissistic possession is that high. That's what's going on and why so many women are ended up, you know, stalked and killed by these dudes. They're all narcissists and some of them are just straight sociopathic narcissists. They just went all the way off the chart with their shit. Um, they need attention. They always feel like they deserve special treatment. What do we hear? You know, I need my pay first. You know, um, I'm the man of the house, you know. I should get what I want and your body belongs to me. And, you know, blah, blah, blah. And these, you know, little white dudes want to shoot up a school and everything because they mad they want to date with a pretty little co-ed and they look like Fred Flintstone. And so don't nobody want to go out with them, not with those 18 and 19-year-old girls. They want a fly dude. And so you looking like, you know, the back end of a drunk and shit. And then, you know, so they would go somewhere. and then they get mad because in their mind, they're wonderful and perfect and they deserve it because they're entitled to it, damn it. They all they want this kind of girlfriend and they deserve to have it. And these women are denying me. It's their fault that I'm, you know, I've got TFL. That's true force loneliness for those of you who don't know that acronym. They're mad because they feel like they're entitled to women. Okay, so these are all signs, you know, of narcissism that are think um, you know. Well, there's a lot more, but We'll be talking about narcissism again in more detail uh, during uh, February. But um, that's, you know, those are my 12 things that I think are just huge. I mean, just like right in your face signs that what you calling yourself getting involved in, your little situationship, your relationship, your boyfriend, your baby daddy, your whoever this clown is that you messing around with. Any of these 12 signs, need you need to know what time it is. This is not going to last. There's nothing about this situation that's permanent. This is a fool. You need to get away from him as soon as possible. That might save your life. Okay, well, you sitting up there trying to work, talk about, well, you know, but I love him, though. You need to love your damn self. And, you know, you talk, you want to love somebody, love your parents. They don't want you to be burying you. 
You're supposed to be burying them. That's out of the correct order of things. Old before young. And you got these parents got to bury their daughter because the daughter, you know, had some crazy-ass boyfriend that she, quote, loved. Y'all better be thinking more about yourselves, please. Please, please. I cannot stress this enough. So if you guys thought more about yourself, 90% of the bullshit situation that you get into, you wouldn't be in them. I mean, there's always going to be them 10%. Like, you won't even know them, right? And they decide that they like you, like they live down the block or whatever, and then they become a stalker. Okay, there's nothing you can do about it. Some guy who works on the third floor, you work on the fifth, and he sees you and he decides. You know, I mean, those things do happen. You know what I mean? But I'm not talking about them. Those are something that you absolutely have zero control over these other 90 percent where you get in willingly involved and stay involved with a man that's an idiot that's violent that's a control freak that's i mean just like there's no redeeming social value you have nothing in common with you just forcing yourself to stay in a relationship because of other needs that you feel like you have to get met by him all of these things are signs that you need to leave that man alone this shit is just crazy. And then, you know, you spend years and years and some, and some women decades of their life in these situations trying to figure out what is wrong and why the relationship is just stupid until they finally just realize it blew up a long time ago and you just living there breathing up dust. That's all you're doing. Atomic dust. Yes, it has to be self-love. Oh, my God. I think really that's, you know, that's the, the crux of the problem. It's There's just not, women just don't love themselves enough. They think men are more important, that, you know, men are better. Or so. I don't know what y'all be thinking, because I feel like there's not a man that's been born yet, including Jesus Christ himself, that is better than Deb. It just hasn't happened. So that's me. I love me. And I am not ever going to put myself in a situation with some dust monger and, you know, worrying about his ass. I don't think so. No, not happening. Yeah, abort mission, abort, abort, divest, flee, exes up. I mean, you know, danger, Will Robinson. Whatever you way you want to get the message to yourself, you just, you know, these are the 12 things that, like I said, these to me are just so fucking obvious. So, I mean, you don't even have to really think about it. Just pay attention. Now that they have been set out for you, if you need to, go back and listen to this video and make notes. Put these 12 things in your wallet, in your phone. I mean, whatever you're going to do, whatever you can do, so that it stays in your mind, especially if you're out here dating. You need to have this shit fresh in your mind so that when it happens, you recognize it for what it is, and then you can just tell the dude, you know, I don't think this is going to work out. This is not going to work out. You know, we don't really have anything in common. You know, whatever way you want to put it. But you got to be brave enough to do that, ladies, and not just drift along from relationship to relationship because you don't want to be by yourself. You better be by yourself because you don't want to be not by yourself in a graveyard there some damn where with thousands of other dead people. So, you know, you don't be worried about be by myself. Psst. You're never by yourself anyway. I'm trying to tell you. So um, that is our topic for today, everyone. My 12 signs of, <laughs> of a bomb about to go off in your life. You keep fucking with these crazy men. You know, these dudes are just so special. Like I said, I'm sure there's, you know, there's plenty of others I could have mentioned. But I'm trying to, you know, I was trying to keep it short and punchy. And so, you know, I made pretty large umbrellas which covered, you know, a lot of, of, uh, of ground under each, you know, each of the 12 points. And uh, I think that this should be a good start. 12 minimum boundaries a woman should have. Um, I have two videos up on the channel, Rachel, about boundaries. You know, there's like 500 more. But this is like number 506 or 7 or something like that now. Um, just go to the videos page. And in the search bar up there, type in um, boundaries. And I, th I think there's three that will come up. Like right off the top, maybe more. But listen to those, and I give you guys some good step by step um, ideas on establishing boundaries and um, and being, you know, very firm about them when you're out here dating and even at work. You know, in any interaction with your own family, your kids. I mean, women just need to have more boundaries, and uh, th that would make me happy. I think you guys would be a lot happier too. If you have any ideas for topics, because I'm still taking ideas for February, the calendar is not 
complete yet, but you know, we're working on it. You can email those to survivingdating at gmail.com. Email your ideas. Let me write that in here. This little snap thing. And just put February topics in the subject line. And so I have a folder for all of those emails. And then it will be filtered into that folder. Because I get so many emails, honey, you may, I may not never see it. So uh, you hope you guys really do that. Put February, something about February in the subject line so it will go to the right place. And then I can just go in there and pull everybody's ideas, all right? And uh, But I will see you um you know, on the weekend for sure. I will be back on the weekend and uh, come up with something. We'll probably have a live stream on either Saturday or Sunday. And uh, and then we're going to start grinding down. I'm going to slow down next week because then I got to start with the February videos. And so I'm about to, you know, I got to rest up. I need to eat my Cheerios and shit. <laughs> I'll see you guys then on the weekend. You guys go out and have a good time. And thanks for coming. Bye-bye.